Yeah, I would say balancing the family life and my kids and running is super difficult. Because I've already decided that I'm going. So it's like, are you going to make this a laborious, torturous journey? Or are you going to try to have the best time possible? It's also been hard watching like everybody run and I want to be out there with them. I think it's important to remember that it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. When you're young, you know you're different, but you don't know, you don't know why. It's not till later that you realize that you're gay, but when you're young, you're not really gay, you're just a kid. And you know that people look at you differently and you feel very alone. So I grew up in a very religious household. Um, we went to church about five times a week. It was a church that was very anti-homosexuality. It was scary. It was scary and all you wanted was, was to belong, but you didn't. It's weird because when I see these pictures, I do see a happy kid, but it doesn't really match the memory. It just goes to show how much you're trying to step out of yourself and put on this image that you are happy when really you're not. So I was, had a pretty successful high school running career. When I came to university, it was like running, 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 running. Everything was revolved on running, which was fantastic. That, that was really, really good. But then I started to meet other people and I kind of got drawn to this world where I've always wanted to be a part of. So in year three, I decided to quit um, the track team, cross country team. And I just went on this exploration of what this gay world was, but in the, in the very specific context of, of partying. There came a point where the partying didn't really work anymore. I was in a really dark place w without even knowing that I was. It's like all those feelings that I had as a child where I didn't belong, nobody loves me. Those came back and it got to a point where I just didn't care. So then that led me to be a little reckless in my, in my choices. And after a few times of playing with fire, um, I eventually was diagnosed with HIV. When I started to tell people, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be because I'm not ashamed anymore. It's, it's, it's who I am and it's part of my story. And that's okay. And that has been a long journey, but if I can sum it down, you know, it was my determination, you know, running helped me as well, and then reconnecting with my faith is really what got me out of that situation. Now I know what love is, and now I know what love should feel like. And I'm so excited to continue to explore that because growing up, I didn't really feel much love. And now I feel like I'm, I'm surrounded by love. So far, my journey has been a little challenging. And it's been challenging because, well, I fractured my leg. I was frustrated because I knew that I wouldn't be able to run. And I just thought about, what if I can't run anymore? I would, I would be devastated. All right, keep going. <laughs> Tired? All right, you got much better at it. It broke my heart to see her cry like that, but I also just told her, you know what, this is just part of the journey, and you just gotta, we take the next step and you'll get back to it. She honestly felt as though she's not gonna run again, and she really did not want to even come out and support her sisters at first. Then I just told her, at the end of the day, you can still be a part of the whole journey, just you are going to be on another side of it. And slowly, when she started coming to kick back and saw how much people are supporting her, she became more motivated. And she said, you know what, Dad, like, I just want to get back to it, so whatever I have to do, I'm going to do it. And uh, that was nice to hear, so. Yeah, otherwise, your movement's really good. Like, you can bend your knee well, you can straighten it well. It's just, I think there's a little bit of weakness that happened after a few weeks of being in the cast, um, being on crutches. And obviously, there was pain for a little while. Um, so I think this left leg's just a little bit weaker from that. But. I think we'll start to exercise you little by little and pretty optimistic that you'll be good for October. Yeah. How do you feel? Good. Yeah? Cool. Thank you. Yeah, you did great. I need to already know. So you gotta sleep and then one knee extend. 
My advice to anybody that has a goal is like for any sport, just do your a hundred percent best in it. Because if you're doing like half of half percent, then then what's the point of doing it? What's the point of putting so much work, effort, and time into it when you don't when you're not putting your hundred percent best? So you should always do your hundred percent best in whatever you want to do. Usually I do three times, but you guys are struggling. So. <laughs> I feel stronger. I feel like I'll never give up. And even since I had a little fall, that doesn't mean I won't stop. And I'm going to be great on at the man. So I have I have a little something. You guys may or may not know this, but when we first initially started out, a half marathon was the goal. Well, since we've begun, I've caught the spirit. <laughs> the running spirit. <laughs> the running spirit. I will be completing the full marathon. Oh my God! Last week, we officially signed up to do the marathon and 15 women from the Run Club signed up to do a half marathon as well. And to see that, like, what I'm taking on is inspiring people to figure out and live their best lives too, is like, it's encouraging and it also like holds me up too because now it's like, Oh, you about to back out? Like, <laughs> you really can't back out. So it's that's like a beautiful encouragement, seeing, seeing the progress in myself, but also seeing like how it's impacting people. When I'm like on long runs, I think like, oh my gosh, like how is it going to be possible for me to do longer than what I'm doing? Like right now is so challenging. But then I remind myself like three months ago, this was a really challenging number. Especially getting in the kilometers, just like chunk by chunk, helps you to realize that you can build yourself up to that. And like, it's your brain that you have to work with to get there. I, I feel like I see all sorts of people running and if they can do it, I can do it. Cheryl thinks my running is, is good. I think she's supportive of it. However, I say that being in a family unit, two kids is a handful. Trying to get them ready, it's taxing. And I think that is the challenge. So once the stress comes in, that's when things fall apart. That is the, is the balance. I'm almost a year into my new job, so I kind of think about how much flexibility I have. So he did tell me about like the future runs that are that will be happening that he wants to include the family in. And I think that that's wonderful. But I also kind of think, oh no, am I gonna be watching the kids by myself? Reality is I might have to be with them a lot and I love spending time with them, but it's raising two kids is really hard, especially two small ones. And I also don't wanna take them away from like all of the celebrations and all the training that like is involved with that. So it's always a battle that I kind of have with myself because I want him to kind of be aware of my needs too. But I'm, I'm overall, I'm like super happy that he's doing it. It's for him um, and it's a good example for our kids, but I would be lying if I said it wasn't hard. It's been really tough. It's been actually, it's been really tough. Kind of tougher than I thought. I thought this summer would have been like really good for running. I, would, I, I envisioned running like almost like every day, if not every second day. So I would say balancing um, family life, like the kids and running is, is the biggest challenge about right now for the marathon. It's not the destination, it's the journey. What does the journey mean to me? I would say the journey means that it's the, it's the process, it's the ups and downs how you handle them. Yeah, I think like what, what I was saying is sometimes it's like, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard.
Now people will start training soon for TCS Toronto Waterfront Marathon. That's the one massive weekend. Uh, people from 75 countries, 25,000 runners, crews from everywhere. But we've got like four months of training for that. We're all there for the same reason, but our roads are all different. Well, I think anybody that's trying to reach that marathon has to sacrifice in some form. That destination piece is so short, but the journey is so long. We have to choose courage, we have to choose discipline over fear and doubt. And that sacrifice is going to lead us to that big moment. And when we finish that cross line, that's what we're going to remember, all the sacrifices and all the, uh, all the commitment that we put into it. And I think that's what's special, is how you got to the destination. I think that's the story. The destination's a celebration. We're such a diverse community, but we're all kind of together in unison, which is cool. We get to decide that this is going to be exciting, and ultimately we'll get the beautiful outcome of completion. One, nothing good ever comes easy, and number two, you can't do it on your own. So let's all come together and, and have an amazing celebration over the next four months. And on the weekend of October 14th to 16th, we'll be there together.